everyone. Welcome back to Aliens Watching Reality TV. I'm Erica. And I am Josh. And finally, Love is Blind is back with some new episodes. And we get to talk about our our favorite show, our raison d'etre. <laughs> We're not going to talk about the fifth season, however. We're going to talk about the After the Altar of season four. Because the fifth season just isn't out yet. If it was out, we'd be talking about it. Yeah. But it comes out in a couple of weeks. I'm also uh, coming at you from my new house. I just moved. I had to leave behind my podcasting studio, which was just a very large closet. And I, I'm now in a wonderful new place that just has normal sized closets. And so I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to cram myself into one of them yet. I haven't decided. We'll see. If it makes enough of a difference in the audio. (laughs) Yeah. So if anyone can hear that I'm clearly not in a podcast studio in this episode, go ahead and complain. Go ahead and complain. Let me know. This is the only time complaints are are, uh, welcomed. The rest of the time, I don't want any. (laughs) No, I think I will not complain about it. I'm going to be very um, accepting. Yeah, I kind of meant like the, the listeners, but thank you. So the first episode of Love is Blind Season 4, After the Altar, we get to see the star couple of the season. Maybe the second couple in Love is Blind history that doesn't have any haters. It's the Browns. Yeah, it's Brett and Tiffany. I think to nobody's surprise, the Browns are still going strong after one year. We learn that Tiffany moved to Portland, which I think we already knew was going to happen. Yeah. And uh, Brett even still, I think, looks exactly the same, even has the same haircut. And I wonder how often he has to get it fixed up so that it always stays exactly the same. It's true. It's been a whole year. I expected a little, a, a few differences, but the only person who made changes is Zach. He grew a beard. Yeah. Um, yes, they... They are the second couple we get to see. It's the Goitowskis. Um The Goita- Oh, my God. The number of times that we get to hear. I mean, it's sweet. It's sweet that they keep saying it's the Goitowskis. <laughs> Zach's happiness looks like a growing a big old beard. And yeah. we learned that Zach has been getting allergy shots. That's the big news. That is the big news. The big news is that Zach has been getting the allergy shots so that... Bliss and him can finally be with Bliss's cat and dog again because he hasn't been able to hang out with them because he's allergic. At first, it's kind of presented in an anticlimactic way because at first they're sort mm-hmm. of trying to make you think, like, are they trying to have a baby? Um, which yeah, then maybe think they seem a little young for IVF, but what do I know? Um, uh, but no, they're it's good. It's it's allergy shots. I was impressed with the way both of them handled it. I feel like both of them handled this situation differently than most people do. I've done like a lot of pet rescue and trying to help find homes for pets. And um, not that I would have ever expected Zach or Bliss to do this, but it's horrifying how many people just decide to get rid of their pet because their new boyfriend or girlfriend is allergic yeah like that's 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 the most common fucking thing to do that's horrible it's really really horrible like they are i mean lola is my family anybody who has a problem with lola it's as if they have a problem with me so yeah if we're dating and you don't want like my dog then you're not gonna be dating me (laughs) you're gonna be dating someone whose dog you like or who doesn't have a dog because that's not me and i and I really, really appreciate that Zach, like, really um, does that. That Zach, you know, understands the fact that those are family. They're not, you know. Yeah, because, like, I know a lot of people, they don't even want to, you know, pop a Claritin every day. But, like, his allergy seems, like, pretty intense. He says, I think the way he described it is that my ability to breathe was severely restricted. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no. So you like, don't want your ability to breathe to be restricted ever. Yeah. So truly, uh, people who don't want to take an allergy pill um, have no excuses. Zach has shown you 
the the way. <laughs> you know the way. Yeah, exactly. You know the way. I don't know if I was surprised or something, but the fact that like Bliss temporarily had her pets live with her parents um, so that they could get his allergies straightened out too. That's a big sacrifice and compromise to make for your new partner too. Yeah. Moving on from Zach's allergy shots, we go to see Chelsea and Kwame. I'm still amused at just like what has transpired with Chelsea and Kwame is so unsurprising to us, but I feel like most, at least certainly most of the other Love is Blind podcasts I listen to and when I've seen shit on like Twitter and Reddit, people misinterpreted their whole relationship so much. I'm totally with you. Yeah. I'm totally with you. Yeah. Like, I'm totally no, they with act, you. They love like each this, other. <laughs> yeah. Like this recent, this is what happened, y'all. Okay. Erica and I saw it and we're going to tell you how it happened. The way that they did it was... Every time that Chelsea and Kwame were talking, when Chelsea asked Kwame something, the camera brought, like, came close to his face, but never gave you his answer. And it made it sound like he was, like, iffy. But he wasn't. Like, when if you listen to his speech on the wedding day, he was, like, extremely sure. Like, the confidence was even higher than Chelsea's. And I keep reading people saying that, Chelsea is the only one who's like super into this relationship and he's not into it. And I I don't know, y'all. I don't know what you guys think. <laughs> Wait, he's the most involved out of all of the husbands. Like he, Tiffany had to move for Brett. Okay. Yeah. Zach had to take shots. <laughs> and Chelsea looks amazingly happy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Kwame and, does and, seem really happy too, even though he had, did have to uh, pause his jet setting lifestyle and move. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, but, but it's not like I mean, he also, looks happy. Also, he looks happy. I mean, I, I, the the proof is in the pudding, right? <laughs> his actions show how he feels, and and his words too. Yeah. Um, obviously, as an autistic person, I do put value into the things people say. I'm actually I'm listening to an interesting audiobook right now um, by Malcolm Gladwell called "Talking to Strangers," and it's really about how fucking bad people are at correctly interpreting and understanding strangers. Basically. People are really, really bad at correctly <laughs> guessing somebody's like feelings or emotional state based off of their facial expression, but most people think they're good at it. And um, people are also very, very bad at knowing if other people are lying, but we tend to think we're good at it. And Yeah, no, no, we're horrible at, fi- at, at knowing if people are lying. And we, I think but that's... We pretend, we all pretend that we are <laughs> really good at it. Or not. Um, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And so I think that's where people um, just got so, uh, or just just misinterpreted Kwame and Chelsea so much is because they thought they could read Kwame's mind by looking into his eyes. And you can't. Like, you you can't. Yeah, you just can't. (laughs) Like, if you go back to all the episodes, the same thing happened over and over again. She would ask a question, and the camera would pan onto his face, like, pan out, and then it would break. He would he would do, like, a little smirk laugh kind of thing. <laughs> and the camera would disappear. And But when you see the episode, like, the all three of them are extremely into it. Like all three couples oh, yeah. that were this there. This is definitely, it's um, the most successful season um, of Love is Blind so far, as far as just like the number of couples that are making it and how happy their yeah. relationships seem to be. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm a fool. Maybe it's all for TV, but I'm buying it. I'm, I'm buying what they're selling. I'm totally buying it. No, no, I think I'm buying it too. <laughs> I mean, it seems the, the, the kind of red flags that you see. Uh, that you would, you know, that will like strike you if you, if they were not like real, if it was like a fake relationship, like we would see those, we would tell you about them. There just isn't anything. I mean, I think 
um, yeah, you can see what a fake relationship looks like in the scene between Micah and Paul's mom, where Micah is pretending oh to like Paul's God. mom and not so very oh convincingly. Oh, my God. The way that that whole mom thing was happening, just not into that. I don't know. I think at one point, Micah finally understands something, and I think it's good for her own development. Um as a human being and like, you know, as a person, uh, which is that, yeah, like there seems to be <laughs> this thing where Paul does have like a window open towards Micah and, you know, maybe that's not good for Micah. Maybe it's not good for you to be still attached to someone that you hope to be married to, or I don't know, at least on the show, that was the real part. But otherwise there was just nothing really real. I a- definitely think Paul's mom really likes Micah. I believe Liz, the mom. Yeah. But Micah uh, just, and you know, honestly, there I go thinking that I can accurately interpret people based off of their facial expressions. Yeah. But I just feel like her, her smile is so fake and she just seems so disingenuous. It's an awkward scene. It's a fucking awkward scene. It's very awkward. I'm not a Paul's mom fan. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I mean, I don't hate her either. She's just, you know. I don't person. hate her, but I'm kind of horrified by like 90% of the things she says to and about her son. She's a loving mom who just. Oh, no, no. She does definitely have her son. It's, me, it's just you know? that I don't think she understands him at all. I no, she, th- not yeah. at all. I mean. Her main reason for liking Micah and Paul as a couple is because they looked cute together. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure is last on Paul's list of priorities, you know? Yeah. Do we look cute together? Are we a cute couple? He is seeing someone, but that person never appears on After the Altar. Which maybe means that... It's actually a healthy relationship. (laughs) I think Paul dating someone and then not bringing him to the after the altar thing really made me respect him a little bit. Um, I wonder if he put it in front of them and they were like, no, I don't want to go to the after altar, the altar. There's going to be drama. But the fact that that whoever he's dating didn't show up. Um, great for them. Like, I like that they didn't show up. They did not get themselves entangled into further drama. Yeah, and they're not just dating him because he was on a show, or else they would want to be on it. Yeah, yeah. And it becomes pretty clear as you watch the show that, you know, the show is very popular. (laughs) Chelsea gets to throw the first pitch at a Mariners game. Like, it's huge. Yeah, it's super popular. Um, It's definitely Netflix's most popular reality show, but it's also just, like, one of its most popular shows i don't want to go on a limb and throw out any numbers or anything but i've definitely yeah it's it's a big one and so given that i mean the fact that they didn't show up i'm i'm kind of happy for them i mean other people showed up that we didn't know about um one of the things that happened during the live broadcast the live get together um that happened that we um, sort of like forgot about, I guess, but it was brought to our attention again, was that when Marshall asked for the ring back and Jackie was like, nope, I'm going to keep the ring. Jackie was asked by Vanessa Lachey why she thought that Marshall wanted the ring back. And this wasn't live, so Jackie could have said whatever. And Jackie was like, because uh, Marshall wanted to propose to this other girl that he had met at the show. Marshall just immediately says it wasn't like that. Like Keisha, it was only like a single date. And turns out we we get to meet Keisha. We get to meet Keisha because Jackie goes and talks to Keisha about this fact, about the fact that Marshall has said that it was one date. And I mean, they're just listen- hanging out, and that kind of comes up as that's what it looked, seemed like to me. You know, it's not like they're well, even meeting just to discuss that. But no, 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 absolutely. It's just. I was like, how did this come up in here? Like, it was all about a, a ring. Um, and then and then Keisha does show up, uh, come to the party, too. We also get to meet the other person. We get to meet Monica, who had been proposed to by Josh and who had said yes, but then decided that it wasn't for her. So we have even more people come in. One of the things 
that that does is that it kind of takes the pressure off of all the other cast members, you know? So I mean, I think they kind of had to bring in some of the cast members whose relationships didn't work out because they supplied the drama. Our main couples actually have healthy and happy relationships that are not full of drama. (laughs) Right. Yeah, no, even like even a couple of um, there, I even saw a couple of people who had been in relationships whose relationship was not covered. Uh, but they were still at the after the altar. Um, yeah, that was a thing. I think the only person who actually did get engaged but um, wasn't featured uh, on the show was Ava because G, uh, JP was there. Monica was there. Josh was there. But I did not see Ava, which was too bad because I was kind of hoping to at least – see her because um yeah we did a whole episode about jp and ava but they're like easter eggs within these episodes because yeah yeah, they've never actually been focused on (laughs) yeah never jp (laughs) you get to see jp a little bit uh yeah they just put his name on screen yeah a few times and you're like who is jp who are you bro um but we did get to see um ava but ava never talked so we did see just, Ava in, in these episodes. I kind of saw like a tiny little glimpse of Ava. Really? And the is she yeah. at the final party? Yeah, I thought she was. She was at the after altar. Um, oh. I believe so. Well, I don't. I don't know because I could have missed her. No, I think I saw a very brief glimpse, super brief, um, and that was that. Yeah. Um, she had like no speaking she had no words that she said she had there was just nothing yeah the show really just didn't did not find jp and ava interesting enough to focus on but we have and they share a lot on social media which (laughs) can be very illuminating yeah yeah i mean i think apparently monica shared a lot too and it really made josh mad i haven't seen any of it though Oh God, it's, it is, uh, oh gosh, we can talk about that. But the thing that really struck me in the first two episodes was, and this is kind of (laughs) sad, it's not sad for the people on the show, but it's kind of sad for the people watching, like just sad as our lives are slightly sad and that the first two episodes were super happy. There was no drama. It just focused on the couples that were um a couple uh, the couples that had gotten married and it was just so fucking wholesome there was like almost no (laughs) bad drama i was a little i don't know like in the back of my head i was thinking you were bored that's what you said before we started no no no, i wasn't bored it was (laughs) like you said you were bored i mean you're looking for drama because you know it's reality tv but at the same time josh loves drama Josh drama sherry. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, I didn't, I didn't find the wholesome stuff boring. I actually thought the most boring part of the three episodes was the first half of the third episode because, wow, um, that's when they're playing the flag football game and they just really overestimated how much I, as an audience member, care about sports. There were too many sports references throughout the whole thing. I don't care. I just yeah. Every time they wanted to talk about the the upcoming flag football game again, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go get a beverage. You know, yeah. My legs. Yeah. No, no. I think the 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 which I'm gonna call it. Um, there were multiple people on this show who are into sports. Chelsea is majorly into sports. Kwame plays sports. Uh, Brett is very sporty. Uh, and Zach and Bliss were super competitive, it seems. <laughs> and it's, there were other people that we didn't get to meet who were also very into this. And I don't know, Seattle is all about sports and whatnot. 
And Ew. so it seemed like a good idea to them, but all the introverts watching it were like, uh, why are you all not wearing safety equipment? <laughs> and and we and we realized that that was actually something good because we find out Tiffany did break her finger. Oh, she did? Yeah. Yeah, was a Chelsea talks a fair amount about how much she likes sports and it's just pretty funny because she does say a lot of things that are like stereo just stereotypical things and sort of you know associated with a a pick me personality but Mm -hmm. I I do find Chelsea to be very genuine and so I think she just like she just is that way but um I also thought it was very funny that she was like, don't think that because I like pink. I don't know about sports. I know the rules of sports. I know the rules of football, basketball, soccer. Um, Because I feel like usually when people are protesting, you know, any assumption that they're not into sports, they prove that like they know the players and they know Mm -hmm. the teams and stuff. Um, But she knows the rules. Like she's read the uh, referee's handbooks for all of the sports and is aware of how many inches apart the lines must be on all the field. You know, I just thought that was funny to me. Yeah. No, for me, the, um, for me, the first two episodes were like, it was a, it was good. It was affirming. It was good to know that these people were having a good time. Um, They had put, a lot into this you know a lot of their life a lot of their emotions and it was good to see that some people like a a bunch of people had come out super happy from this experience like their lives have been altered yeah at least you know the the main cast because i mean the main cast that we followed yeah yeah because marshall also is in a new relationship and um seems very happy um yeah. It, it seems genuine to me also. And just the way he talked about her, because we, we do end up getting to meet her in episode two, um, even though I don't know if she says anything that we heard. But he's like talking her up and how she just passed her board. So now she's Dr. Shea. And, it yeah. do, and I think like he really wanted that kind of a partner, somebody who – has big dreams and the same interests that he had, you know, and like Jackie just wasn't that person at all. No, not at all. I feel like Jackie wanted to be that person or not wanted to be that person. Jackie, Her her journey was, do I want to be that person or do I want to be the persona I have constructed to get through my trauma <laughs> yeah and she said that is the, persona that is... and trauma i'm keeping them <laughs> yeah i mean yeah no since we get, are talking about jackie let's we got to talk about jackie and josh jackie and josh Story. up on the ferris ferris wheel you think uh romantic you love it you, you ship it jackie and josh yeah i'm just i'm joking I mean, I find my God. Josh so horrifying in all of these scenes. Yeah, like thank God, honestly, there there really aren't um, as many like toxic couples this season as in past seasons, but they they are. Um, and I think Josh is even more toxic than Jackie is. He's never nice to her um everything he says is a quote unquote joke that is um negative towards her literally everything yeah it's he's just he, i don't know what his spiel is like what is what is he's insecure uh, my i feel like you can my prop you can see it in every little interview the thing that really got me at first was how, why would Jackie like him? But 
now I understand a lot better why Jackie would like him. Because I really felt like Jackie was a different person uh, who changed. But she hadn't changed. She just was a different... She had, like you said, she just... When she was there, she was a different person. Um, She was kind of... I mean, the reason I feel like she gets along with Jackie is because they kind of are similar in a lot of ways. Um, I think she she was trying to decide, do I want to change? And decided it, it was too hard. And so... She wanted yeah. to be with somebody um, who would not uh, need her to be up her best self. You know, she could be mm. her, her just whatever self, her her worst self. I mean, uh, whatever like, makes her happy. It's it's not that's not a. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't. I, guess. I don't think. I don't think she is very happy. Um, she didn't seem happy. Yeah. At all. I mean, at the after the altar, the. Um, one of the things that I think many, many of our listeners do not know, uh, and one of the, many of the viewers do not know is that Monica and Jackie are actually real life friends. Or at least they were. You know that? Yeah. They, they went to high school together. Oh, oh, I, I missed that part. I think. No, I think they were, they were like very close. They were friends even before this. Mm. They went to the show together. Wow, that makes it extra sad. Yeah, this is why what, what explains why Monica, like Jackie, was not able to shrug off Monica. You know, Monica <laughs> was like a, f- a friend that had been her friend for a very long time. You know, like for instance, imagine if you went on a dating show uh, and you went with Frida. Not, not let's say not Frida, but like you went on a dating show with me. You know. Okay. And at, we both dated people and somebody who's an ex of mine starts dating you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if I start giving you opinions about that person, you cannot dismiss me immediately, you know, because I'm your friend. It's not, I'm not just some, some other contestant who dated the person. Like I have, I have sure. more skin in the game. Anybody that than I'm just, dating, I would probably. Yeah. And the way that, Josh tried to shut her down. Not only was it disrespectful, she called it out like very, very loudly. And Jackie was just like, yeah, like she couldn't, she could not defend Josh. That's the um, thing. She was in this awful position where yeah. she doesn't want to be in this conflict, um, which her boyfriend is starting and she can't, she can't really defend him. I think she doesn't really uh, agree with him or want to. Basically, I think what she's going to do is not the same as what she really would want to do. But um, Josh is divisive, and he is, and so when she has to divide, when she has to decide between Josh and a friendship, she chooses Josh. And I think that will probably happen more and more because he is <laughs> jealous and possessive and insecure and mean. And so he will probably destroy more of her friendships and relationships, especially with any friend who tries to, you know, tell her, Hey, he doesn't treat you right. This isn't a good relationship. Like he's definitely going to try to get any female friends who might give her that kind of advice out of her life. Yeah. Yeah. It's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is sad. Yeah. But Monica was very, very like the way that Monica, like, (laughs) was like, I'm sorry. The first of all, the way that Josh tries to like shut Monica down is I got to say not only disrespectful, but just so childish. Yeah. Like you do not tell someone uh, on a reality she- TV show that you have participated yourself and continue to take part in, that they're cloud chasing. Like, it, it just, you don't, you, first of all, you don't get to say that. Uh, second, they are not even like talking about you in a non personal context. They're talking about their own experience. It just happened to be that your shitty ass turned out to be on that experience. Yeah, you know? they're literally so, sharing <laughs> their experience on TV yeah. and then she wants to share her experience a bit on social media and suddenly 
that's clout chasing, which I really yeah. actually the subtext there, which I didn't think about until this moment is Josh is saying, um, we are so famous and important that we give you clout. So you're, you trying to associate yourself with us is clout chasing. Like Josh, yeah. you're not that special. And, um, you will fade from memory quickly. Yeah. And, and, you know, it really makes you wonder did, did Josh try to get back with Jackie because Jackie was being filmed and presented in the show. Like, did you try to chase clout by wanting to be with Jackie? Like, I don't know, buddy. Like, um, I mean, but, yeah, maybe that was it. Or he, he just, once he saw her, he was like, <laughs> damn, she's really hot, you know? Yeah, but um, also I do think you yeah. know there there is this uh, there is this phenomenon where um, when you have grown up with um, you've had a tra- traumatic childhood or you've had just like bad experiences with the people who are supposed to love you, um, if you were treated poorly by the people who you loved and were supposed to love you, that is your concept of love. And so in the future, when somebody loves you in that way in the, and um, and treats you poorly in that same way, that feels like love. That registers um, on a deep level with you as like that, this is what love is. And I think that is a, a big thing. And you know, yeah, this is definitely just my opinion. And um, I could be wrong and it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think that that is a big part of Jackie's interest in Josh is, um, that the way that he treats her, uh, and the way that she feels like him and uh, I mean, that feels about him and the, the way that he, yeah, the, <laughs> never lets her feel secure in the relationship that, um, is what feels like true love to her and um and like the the relationship with Marshall and the way he loved her didn't feel as real and so she couldn't really engage in it because it was you know it was easy there was no um there's no chase there was <laughs> you know it was like just the it's probably a reflection of how she has been loved in the past. Yeah. There's, I mean, in order to accept love, you first need to know what love is. And when you don't know what love is, you uh, take whatever that was offered to you by the people who were supposed to offer you love as love. And if the people who were supposed to love you have given you abuse, you are going to just see abuse as love. So you're going to find people who are abusive. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what it looks like. It just really looks like Josh is a person like that. And she seems to want to be around that. She seems to be comfortable with that. And um, yeah, she's more comfortable with how the mean way he treats her than when Marshall was yeah. openly nice to her. Yeah. I mean, she was literally asking him to like, take what does she say take charge yeah boss up and be more boss aggressive up, yeah. i think yeah yeah so and that's i'm sorry i'm never gonna ask anyone to boss up and be aggressive especially when they are you know you're in the middle of a fight like that's just demeaning but you can expect that from someone like josh so i, I wrote I down another um, some of the specific things that Josh said, th- th- these are most of the things Josh said <laughs> throughout the three episodes. Um, he throws his food, uh, at her in when they're on the Ferris wheel, she doesn't like it. And he says, sometimes life is going to throw things at you. And that's why I did that. And, um, I like all of these things are <laughs> presented as jokes you know, oh, haha, that's just he's joking around. And I'm sure that's how he would defend it if she ever got mad. And she doesn't love it. But like, I would, I would be so mad. Um, and then in their new um, apartment, 
He's like, oh, this could all be yours if you act right. Um, he makes that is so shitty to say. Yeah. Like, it's so weird. Yeah. Like, and she who doesn't the even fuck are you? Are you? <laughs> um, and then he is talking about how she looks like this nutcracker. Um, and he, he says, like, the mustache, joking that she has a mustache. She doesn't even notice. <laughs> um, and then they're opening some champagne. He says, I was going to point the bottle at you because you get on my nerves. Oh my God. Like, he can't say a single uh, fucking nice thing to her. And no. that, that, I mean, this is just sad and does make me just feel more like sympathy, I suppose, for Jackie. But like, she, that's easier for her uh, to handle than Marshall's, I think, what felt like over the top kindness. You know, it's easier mm. to respond to, it's more comfortable. Um, is she, feels like she feels equipped to, to respond to it whereas she never really knew how to respond to Marshall especially in kind you know um but definitely mm-hmm. Josh is way meaner to Jackie than she is to him um and she does look at I don't know why but she does look at him with like love in her eyes and he does not look at her that way he doesn't no, he just yeah. I like I said, he he's accusing Monica of cloud chasing, but he seems to be the ultimate cloud chasing person. Yeah, like, the kind of things that he does. Yeah, just yeah. I mean, usually accusations are projections. <laughs> there are a lot of apologies, Irina. Oh man, I have gotten to a point where I feel a little bad for Irina because. All she can do is apologize, and she just has to, like, eat all the shit. And I do think she is doing a better job of taking responsibility and genuinely apologizing than Micah has done. And Micah is basically getting off scot-free for all the things that she and Arena did together, and Arena is getting, like the full focus of the ire, which I just think is, I don't know, it's just an an annoying double standard. And so I think Irina is mostly handling it as well as she could. I mean, I guess in a weird way, she is sort of modeling what, what, what you should do if you fucked up a lot. You know, if you have majorly fucked up, you should take responsibility, make amends, and you have to accept if people don't accept your apologies and if they're still mad at you and you hear them out. Yeah. And she does she does try to explain herself. She claims it's not an excuse, but she's like, I didn't actually know you were crying. And Amber's like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. So that was Irina's uh, weak spot in the episode. But Yeah, I think, I mean, she's definitely doesn't want to keep being the villain of the internet. And so, yeah, I guess she's, I think she's modeling uh, good behavior after a cancellation, a well-deserved cancellation. I think more, more people should do that instead of like just defending themselves and being like, I'm being silenced for my truth, you know? Yeah. No. Yeah, no, she's definitely not being silenced and and she's, you know, I I like that she has been doing the apology tour and I'm I'm happy to see that. I think the way that Amber, you know, talks about it and the way that everyone else like the way that people, you know, the way that people forgive her but also don't let it slide. Yeah. Which is like kind of cool and but I also can't completely respect it because they don't hold Micah to the same standard. And I just I can't get on board with that. Be consistent. And if you're gonna if you're going to let Micah get away with being mean, then like when Arena apologizes to you, just don't rub it in her face more. If you're not gonna if you're not gonna rub it in Micah's face more, then don't do it to Arena. Just like sometimes, especially if 
you were not like particularly personally harmed just be the bigger person and let it go but obviously like zach and amber and people who really were like some of the focus of the worst things arena did um, they get to respond however however they want to respond like however they feel is okay and i think arena has done a good job of of yeah letting them respond however they do and listening and not trying to disagree or defend herself which is hard a lot of people can't do that probably most people can't do that yeah no i'm 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 totally I'm I'm with you on that again. What do you think about what were your thoughts about Amber on the show? For for those who cannot who haven't kept track, Amber was really into Paul and Paul was into Amber Amber too, but he ended up saying no to Amber and going with Micah. And we all know how that ended up. Oh yeah, Amber. Yeah, I mean and It's obvious that Amber would have been a better choice for Paul, but she does say that she has come to the conclusion that they're really not right for each other, which is also probably true. She does seem to be like extremely social. Probably Paul shouldn't be with an extremely social person. And I, (laughs) but I have seen randomly like some TikToks where that just like (laughs) one of them was Amber without like announcing this in any way she just was like randomly helping this stranger throw her bachelorette party and they were just blown away by how nice she was like i've heard very good things about her as a person yeah she sounds just like an amazing person she is moving to san diego as is paul so and yeah i found it interesting though that in the first of these episodes she mentions that she recently met a guy at a music festival in San Diego, but it's just noon. She'll see where it goes. And then in the third episode, she mentions that she's moving to San Diego, which I think begs the question, is she moving for the guy from the music festival? Exactly. That, that I w- I'd like to know about that. Because that would be some juicy golf. Give me the dates. I'm not going to make any presumptions. I just think it's a fun, fun little topic. Have you ever been? I mean, you've been to San Diego, right? Yes. Yeah. I wa- I went to San Diego in May, April or May with, uh, when I went to a wedding. Yeah. All right. I mean, I hope that they meet up and hang out and are having fun together. Yeah. Or, you know, move on with their lives and have fun separately. I don't know. But for sure, at least I hope Paul can... Because he says that he has ignored Amber in public because he's so afraid now of like accidentally stepping into some kind of dramatic situation because of the whole (laughs) internet furor where people were convinced that he had intentionally slapped uh, bridesmaids. But actually, yeah, Josh, Josh was also convinced. I was, I was not, I was always team that was just a weird angle and an accident of a flappy hand and so it does seem like now paul is afraid to even be nice to people because he doesn't know how it's going to be taken out of context and used on the internet which is sad but also smart because that yeah people will do that yeah okay so there are so many good little things that i wish we had time to talk about but um a couple big things left in the episode, although completely out of order. Um, I want to talk about Chelsea and Kwame um, when they get together with Kwame's family, because I think we actually learn a lot um, about him and that, you know, uh, people's lives are more complicated than you think. Because <laughs> uh, I don't, do you remember how? Um, a lot of people were convinced that because they were so convinced that Kwame didn't actually want to marry Chelsea, they were convinced that Kwame's sister was a paid actor. Yeah, that was just so sad. Like a lot of people believe that, which is goofy. Um, and those, <laughs> here we see the sister is back and clearly like she and Chelsea have a real bond and you can just see they have they have a bond as a family. Chelsea really cares about them and they seem to care about Chelsea as well. And um, also we learned that Kwame was separated from his parents at six months old 
he met them, uh, or at least he met his mom when he was eight. And I think that lends a lot of context also to why he was so concerned about his mom's opinion. And, you know, there was a lot of drama about like, does his mom approve? But we had no idea that this context existed. It was so important to him in part because his relationship with his mom is 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 fraught is is a is not necessarily easy and comfortable and he probably is very afraid of risking it yeah no we we did not know about the fact that him and as like his siblings lived in ghana until like he was eight i think we knew he that comes back. um but we i mean or at least i mean eight, we knew that were... he was from ghana but we hadn't heard that no, I mean, what I didn't, what we didn't know was that he had not met his parents in Ghana. Yeah, no, I didn't know that. I loved also that his brother said the reason he remembers that day when they met their mom for the first time is because that was also the day that he tried Mountain Dew for the first time. Yeah, how do you feel about Mountain Dew? I actually have a lot of memories <laughs> related to Mountain Dew because my dad drank a ton of Mountain Dew when I was a kid. And so the when I would go visit him, the fridge was always full of Mountain Dew. And then eventually I found out he didn't actually love Mountain Dew. He was trying to drink less soda. And so he would drink less Mountain Dew than Diet Coke. I just thought he fucking loved Mountain Dew. But then my brother does love Mountain Dew. And I think because at first it just started off as clearly dad thinks this is the best drink in the world. You know, we only see our dad a few times a year. So all of these, <laughs> all of these interactions are heightened <laughs> in importance and meaning. And so, yeah, weirdly enough, Mountain Dew has plenty of emotional resonance in my life. <laughs> what about you? I'm not really into Mountain Dew as much, honestly. My teeth have like a bad reaction to them. So, yeah. Your teeth? What happens? Uh, they just, they start to like, um, they're sensitive to Mountain Dew, apparently. Yeah, I don't love it. And I don't love regular Coke because my teeth have a bad reaction to Coke. They just feel gross when I, when I drink Coke. But when I drink Diet Coke, I feel amazing. And I'm happy and everything's good let's wrap this up with uh, i feel like we have to talk about jackie and marshall and their sort of closure talk i know i have opinions but what did you think i uh, i thought it was i thought it was a good talk i thought it was i thought it, what did you think i honestly thought it was great i was surprised and impressed. I didn't really even know that Jackie had that kind of emotional maturity in her because it seemed to me, you know, it's not like she had just memorized some of the right things to say. Like it, it seemed very genuine, but I like that's exactly the way I would <laughs> advise people to handle that conversation or that I would try to have that conversation myself where they, you know, they both apologize to each other. He apologizes for kind of pressuring her and she apologizes for the messiness of their breakup. And they acknowledge that they did things wrong and that the other person did things wrong, but without blame and shame, because they can both see how difficult this was and that they are both growing and changing. And they, you know, they really put all of that behind them and yeah, they just are, they establish that they are on good terms with each other. And the part that like kind of really stood out to me is when Jackie says, I really did like you. And Marshall says, yeah, me too. Because I think that's some emotional bravery that a lot of people would not demonstrate in that situation. A lot of people would try to after a breakup, they try to pretend that their feelings for the other person weren't that strong, you know, so they will seem like they were less hurt. And it can be hard to be honest about 
you know, that you really did care for somebody. And so I thought that was like a, a really kind moment and that they shared with each other and they wished each other happiness. And that felt very genuine to me. And I was honestly like, wow, I'm impressed to see this mature of a relation <laughs> of like a conversation on TV at all. You know, I thought it was cool. Yeah, no, I thought it was, I thought it was, it, 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 um, it closed a door, like not just closed a door. I thought it really sort of ended that, buried that hatchet, you know? Yeah. I mean, they really did get closure and I, in general, I think that closure is, uh, largely a myth and, so closure most of the time just happens within yourself, which actually is why they were able to have this closure conversation because they had both already achieved closure in themselves. Nobody else can actually give you closure. That's not real. So I think a lot of people, they they want to have a conversation like this and they think that that will heal their their heart and allow them to move on. And they think that they cannot heal and move on without this closure with the other person. But really this conversation was the exception that proves the rule. Like most of the time you don't get to have this kind of conversation and you don't, (laughs) you don't get to hear from the other person what you've been dying to hear. And, you know, yeah. So, wow, I guess it really does exist sometimes though. It's like seeing a, seeing a unicorn. Yeah. Like seeing a unicorn, you're right. Like seeing a unicorn. Yeah, so I guess uh, we should go to bed, but we will be talking about Love is Blind Season 5 very soon. Because it's coming. I'm so excited. Oh gosh, wait, I have one more thing I want to mention before we go. I laughed so hard when Micah and Chelsea were having a conversation in the last episode. Micah's like trying to apologize and bury the hatchet and stuff. And Chelsea's mostly just being the bigger person and letting Micah have her moment. But then (laughs) Chelsea says to Micah, I don't think your person's here. I really don't. Like not in this city. And she says it like, like a helpful, like girl talk thing, but it's such a burn. Like I don't think anyone in this entire city is going to love you. Yeah. It's really, it's so, yeah. Like, I mean, it was, I feel like it was meant to be more like, listen, you need to move on from Paul, you know, (laughs) but it really came off as, listen, you are the most unlikable person here. Get the fuck out. (laughs) Like, I laughed out loud. I was like, Yeah, and you should move. You should move to a whole different city and state because we don't like you here. Yeah, um, wild. Uh, And Micah deserved it for all the shit she did behind Chelsea's back. So, yeah, I did. I enjoyed these episodes. Um, I'm glad we're back to glad to podcasting. I missed it while you were taking important tests, and then I was moving and. I'm sick of life getting in the way of podcasting. That's that's wrong. It's true. It's true. Same. I am going to try to be, well, I still have more exams coming, but I will be a lot more available. So you're going to see us podcast more since both our living situation has gotten a little more stable. I found more housemates, so I'm going to be staying where I, where I live now. We both have our internet connected once again. Enjoying Wi-Fi. And you've moved to your new house. Yes. So after this, no excuses. We got we got to post and we got to make them post really good. And until then. Till death do us part. Amen. Bye. Bye. Aliens Watching Reality TV is hosted by Erica Heidewald and Josh Sharier. It's produced and edited by Erica Heidewald. That's me. And our theme song is Just World by Erica Heidewald, which is also me. Available for streaming on iTunes and Spotify. For $5 a month, you can subscribe to our Patreon and get an extra full-length episode of the podcast every week. Right now, we're covering Love is Blind Season 1. 
We'd love to hear it from you. Our social media links are in the episode notes, or you can write to us at alienswatchingrealitytv at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and as always, until death do us part. Amen. Welcome to the world. Let me tell you what I've learned.